Right, so I've got some hot cloths and some lovely feet. We're just going to remove these socks and put them on the radiator. Ah, oh, thank you. I hope I don't get ticklish. I shouldn't, I probably won't. I've never got ticklish when I've had it in another treatment. But I feel very nervous. <laughs> There's no need to. I'm really good with people who get ticklish. OK. So if you just separate the feet a little so I've got room for my hand in between, lovely. So nice hot cloths. And I've put some lovely Melissa Freshener, which is a Melissa Hydrolat. <laughs> in fact, only this morning on my YouTube, I was asked a question by a viewer asking, what Melissa Freshener do I use? So there you go, I'm using it today. Uh, Melissa on Melissa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Melissa Freshener. In fact, last time I gave you a treatment, I used some Melissa Freshener toner for part of your facial treatment. And I can remember explaining what Melissa was good for. <laughs> oh, it's, can you smell that? It smells lovely. It's like a slight, almost like lemon, right? It's almost like lemon, yeah. Like lemon balm. Mm. Lovely. Really good for freshening, waking, cleansing, cleaning. See, they look better already. There's a lot of different feet. <laughs> a lot of different feet. And I love them all. They're all beautiful feet. Oh, these ones are a bit chilly at the moment. They always are. Oh, cold feet. Cold feet and hands always. Yeah, or warm heart. <laughs> so you've had reflexology before, a long Ish. time ago. Ish. Yeah. I love doing reflexology because the feet are a beautiful map of the body that are really obvious to navigate around. So this is the left side of your body, your left foot. This is the right side. This here is the same shape as your spine. This is your spine. So this is the left side of the spine. This is the right. And as we cut the body down the center, we can see this lovely shape. Now, some people have quite a pronounced arch of the foot and maybe the foot is shaped like this it comes over here and with you your spine is fairly straight so you haven't got a very pronounced arch of the foot you've just got a, a nice small arch there so i can see that it's actually quite long and straight rather than quite curved yeah, yeah? and so your spine will always correlate to this shape here of your foot Oh, wow, that's so neat. Some people have a really large arch and a really large it, small of the back. So it matches up? It always matches, yeah. So all the organs contained in the upper half of the foot are the upper part of the body, the organs that contain in the upper part of the body. This is the head split into two here. And this is the neck. All the... Uh, the shape here come, comes down to a narrowing at the waist here, where the narrow part of the foot is, just here. And then the rounded hips are here. So if we've got quite straight hips or quite curvy hips, that will show in this outer lower part of the foot on the lateral side. So yours is quite straight. So I'd say you've got quite straight hips, the same as your spine. Oh. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm. Wow. So I am going to start having a feel of your feet now. And of course, I've treated a lot of feet. So I get an idea as to what's happening inside your body. That's why I love doing reflexology, because it really gives you insight inside a vision of what's going on inside for instance lungs digestion hormones things that you can't just see or even if you're giving a massage you can't really tell what's going on right so i'm going to split the body into different systems and then check each one in turn okay. um, as you can see i've hardly got any nails at all 
and I file them down especially for giving reflexology and also neck releases actually in core therapy right. because there are different feelings that you will sense now mm. and um, Obviously, just a feeling of touch, which is just a contact, that, that's good. But sometimes you might feel like a gritty feeling, like there's brown sugar under the skin. And to me, it almost feels like each of these feelings has a sound. So when I'm feeling it, it's almost like I can hear it going like this. And it's like a brown sugar crystally feeling. Um, also, and I can sense it as well. Sometimes I might press and you might say, wow, that's sharp. And it might feel like a needle going deep, not at the surface of the skin, but deep in. Okay. Um, so that might be a very precise area. Also, it might feel like a bruise, like you've trodden on a stone and you've still got a bruise there. Right. Yeah. Um, or it might just feel good. <laughs> you know, like, which, which is thumbs up, you know. I'm, I've, I've drawn your feet. Oh, oh they look so cute. <laughs> so I've, th this is exactly what your feet look like, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I'm going to be plotting out different areas that I need to be working on as, as I'm working. Okay. Oh, it's quite exciting. Okay. So yeah. let's start. So I'm going to start off by checking the solar plexus. So I've just got my thumb in an action like this. So this is the solar plexus. So if you were to say, what does the solar plexus mean? Where is that on the body? It's actually in the V of the ribs, just in and up here. It's a soft area of tissue. So our ribs come up like that and just in that upturned V. We have a soft area of tissue just underneath the diaphragm, which is obviously a, a muscle. And there is a network of nerves there, like um, in the UK, we refer to the spaghetti junction, which is a very busy collection of roads near Birmingham. And so you can imagine this collection of nerves there. And being a, a neural and a nerve area, we feel and sense uh, tension or the opposite of tension, so like freedom, freedom and tension at the solar plexus. So to give you an example, if you had some bad news, you'd probably cover up your mm. solar plexus, whether you do it with your hand like, <gasps> like that, right. or if, um, if you're at work, and someone walks towards you that you're, you need to defend yourself against, you think they're going to say something, then you, if you're carrying a file or a book, you probably hold mm -hmm. it against you like yeah, this. Yeah. And that covers the solar plexus. You know, so if we're holding ourselves like this, we're, we're defending ourselves. We're, we're feeling we need to... We need defence, mm. yeah. On the other hand, if we feel open and free and we trust the people we're with, uh, we don't feel that we're going to need to defend ourselves, our arms are out here, we're not, we're not covering the solar plexus up and we're very content with ourselves, mm. yeah? So that's all about this solar plexus here, which is here on the foot. So this is the first area we check in reflexology and this is a type of reflexology called Swiss reflex. And I can feel there that it feels good. It yeah. feels good. Now, the type of feelings I can sense there sometimes, it can, there's a whole array of sensations. So it can feel, I think the word might be indifferent or bland, like um, maybe there's no spark or not enough spark in that person's life and they mm. just need to be ignited and to realise it's a beautiful life and get out there and enjoy life mm. because this can feel grey. Right. Yeah. Um, or it can feel tight and sharp. Uh, to, so the feeling to you would feel sharp. Okay. Uh, to me it would feel tight, like there's no movement there. Um, but no, it feels really good and open and 
very happy. That's good. That's really good start, isn't it? So now I'm going to check the um, sciatic nerve while I'm on the nervous system. So I'm coming from the lower back through the left buttock in this case, down the outer part of the foot. That feels okay. That's it. And the same for the right side. So I'm doing caterpillar movement. I'm just going to do that one again. No, it feels okay. I thought I could sense something on the outside, but it feels okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to make a little note about that. So moving on to the glandular system. So we're just going to work up the thyroid, which starts just by the side of... Oh, am I tickling you? A little bit. Okay. So I'm just working up the um, ball of the foot to the side of it, upwards, and then to the parathyroid, which governs the thyroid just at the top there, feels fine, which is good. Now I'm going to check the pituitary gland, which is um, just like we have thumbprints or fingerprints, you've got the same on your toes. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. And so where the very centre of the coil, there's probably a proper word for it, that mm. um, of the toe print, mm. of the big toe would be, is where the pituitary gland is in, inside the foot. So I'm just doing a very precise movement on each one. Now the pituitary is the controller, it's the governor of our hormonal system so it controls the release of adrenaline and thyroxine from the thyroid and all our reproductive hormones so it's really important that the pituitary gland is happy and in the right place and not feeling tight or restricted by anything around it it feels really good to me so okay. that's good now I'm going to check the skeletal system. So I'm going to come from the neck down. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's really lovely. But your foot is bouncing back when I'm pressing. You see that bounce? Yeah. And in core therapy, we look for the same thing again. So when we're bouncing the shoulder down, it should spring back when we're bouncing it. The same with the spine. Yeah. And your foot is responding beautifully by bouncing back. So I want that movement there. It shows that you're fluid and soft. Um, I, that doesn't necessarily mean to say you're relaxed and you trust me. And it means that the reflex point of this part of the spine in this case, so it's cervical up here, thoracics through here, is responding well. So just like I bounce the spine with core therapy, I'm bouncing the spine with reflexology now. So there's a little bit, I don't know if you can feel that. I mean, I'm being very picky because I haven't found it much yet. So... There, around that bit. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit around there, okay. And then I'm going to come from the base of the back, from the coccyx, up the right side of the sacrum. Feels okay, feels okay. So just a little point there. This is lower thoracics on the right side. Probably about T12. And actually, the core therapy that we did earlier when I did your retests at the very end, and one of them, which was a psoas test, wasn't too happy on your right side, that was the point that yeah. I touched and said, I'll give it some Qigong now, but it probably needs a bit more. Mm. And that was that point. So I'll work on it here, that, which that's is great. That's so cool that it lines up. I, and I've only just, obviously I didn't. Yeah. I know that was gonna happen, so. That's, yeah. Yeah. So kind just doing. Freaky. <laughs> Same on the other side. Coming down from the neck. Yeah, that's so interesting because I don't feel that tenderness this side at no, all. No, no, no. 
feels good. Okay, so more skeletal system. Let's look at the left scapula, which is the shoulder blade, your lovely angel wing. Feels good. And then the left shoulder point. So the actual top of the shoulder. Oh, crunchy. Okay, so can you feel it moving around under my thumb? Um, there. I can't really tell. You see, the more I do it, the, it, it'll just go because I'm actually treating it by testing it. Um, oh, I can, I can feel that it's different to whatever it just was. Yeah. Maybe. I find it really hard there, to tell on the pinky there. toe, though. Okay. So it feels like I'm moving around fascia underneath the surface of the skin. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of slipping and sliding away from me as I'm... As I'm pressing. Yeah, but the more I'm doing it, it's treating it, it's going. Yeah, I can't really um, show it you as an example because it's getting better every time. <laughs> so now the shoulder point of this side, coming round that rounded shoulder here. So did you say the right foot is the right side of the yeah. body? And the left? So it just aligns this way, so that yeah. would be this shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And again, this one's clicking a bit in a slightly different place. Um, this one was sort of at the back of the shoulder. This one's more at the top. That aligns perfectly with my shoulder pain. Oh, yeah. right. You've got shoulder pain. Oh, yeah, just always. I think it's my bad posture, but I've always got like achy shoulders. Okay. This is always the worst one. Okay, we'll treat those. And now going to treat, or have a look at, elbows, which are just above that pronounced bone there. So just above the elbows, then the hip on the bone. And then just below are the knees. Of course I treated your left knee earlier. So let's have a look at that. Feels fine now. Yeah, that feels fine. Hips. I think I might put hips down. They feel okay, but they just feel a little bit pronounced. Uh, another word I'd say for that is vulnerable. And um, yeah, and this one's, the left one is starting to click a bit. It's so weird that you can only feel it on one side. Like, I've never done feet in such detail to be able to feel these differences. It's, it's really, like, yeah, it's like magic. <laughs> mm. um, so let's look at the respiratory system. So I'm going to look at your sinuses in the left part of the face, just by touching each toe pad, they feel fine. Same on this side, fine. Sinuses feel good. So now the uh, eye on your right side feels good. Ear, oh, clicking immediately. Oh, that's not nice, is it? You don't like that? That's so weird. Is it? Oh, it's just weird. It's not sore. Uh, it's uncomfortable. You don't like that. Clip. Look at you. Yeah. And so, so that was your right ear. So left ear, quite this different. Feels fine. Quite different. That's so weird. Yeah. And then your left eye, fine. So it's only your right ear. Anything with your right ear? No. You know, obviously ears are balance. Sound, tinnitus, hearing, um, but also the ear relates to the kidneys because the ear is the same shape as our kidneys. So, yeah. um, and in reflexology terms, you can treat the whole body through by treating the ear as well. Right. So that's an upside down fetus. This is the head. So where we get pierced ears is our eye. Um. And so apparently, that's why pirates used to pierce the ear of the eye that they look through their oh. 
uh, telescope through in order to give them better vision because it's like constant acupuncture. Oh, burning a hole there. Oh, that's cool. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so... Oh, lungs. So these are the pads. Oh, that one's clicking straight away. Yeah, that, that one's clicking, but only on your right side. So I'll just make a little note of it, but I think I might have already got rid of it. Yeah, um, I can't really feel that one as much no. as the ear. Yeah, it's in yeah. In different that... places, I can tell more. Yes. So now I'm going to look at the digestive system. So I'm just padding through the small intestine on the right side. And I'm going in the direction that the food needs to go. And then down the ileocecal valve feels fine, which is the one we tested earlier when I asked you to put your own fingers on that place. Um, the and then, stomach one. Yeah. And then up the ascending colon, cross the transcending colon and carry on to the other foot. And down the descending, oh, a little bit there. Did you feel it pop? Yeah, it's popping, but a tiny bit, but I will make a note. And then pancreas and stomach, good. Okay. Uh, now let's look at the um, lymph system. So I'm going to come the left front of the foot. That's a bit tight on that side compared to this. So that doesn't feel swollen, it feels just fine. It's just because lymph system can feel swollen with waste right. um, but that just feels a bit tight so that just needs loosening up, up a bit and then round the inguinal lymph in the groin it feels fine and now the reproductive system so coming to the right ovary which is just halfway along the line between the ankle bone and the point of the heel does that feel sore? A bit. Yeah. And then across the fallopian tube. Let go, let go. To the uterus. Same place on the other side, the other ovary. Sore again. Yeah, not as much though. Okay. It might just be it's that ovary working right now. And how does it feel in the centre then? Fine. Yeah, good. And now the urinary system. So starting at the adrenal, kidney, that's sore. And then coming down the ureter to the bladder. Oh, cold foot. <laughs> and then adrenal, kidney, hioi. <laughs> ureter, bladder. So both kidneys need a bit of TLC. Right, I think I've tested everywhere. So I am going to cover them up so that they warm a little and then go and make some cream up. Thank you. Shoulders, kidneys, skeletal with the back as well. Hips, yeah, it's, it's skeletal and respiratory. Mainly a little bit of hormonal and uh, lymph but yeah skeletal and respiratory so i do wonder whether your body is fighting something off at the moment maybe to the lung or the ear and actually it's the same it's right side lung and right side ear so maybe um so i think cedarwood shouts out at me Come on, Cedarwood, where are you? Let's 
say the word. Oh, unless I finished it. Okay, I'm gonna go for another then. Oh. Okay. Right. Oh, here it is. See the word. Okay. Well, we'll test that on you. Test that on you. See the word. So, skeletal respiratory. So, maybe time, because that will kill any bugs that you might be fighting off. Roman chamomile for skeletal, anti-inflammatory. Well, with respiratory as well. Uh, oh, eucalyptus stegariana, beautiful lemon eucalyptus. Uh, rosemary fab for everything, especially those two systems. Frankincense, fab for both. Frankincense, yeah, definitely. Um, clove for a laugh, because it tends to win every time. Oh, lemon. Tea tree. Or is that too many? Right, we've got nine there. Right, we're going to test these. Now doing the testing of these lovely oils. With this hand, can you give me a little finger and thumb? Yeah. And I'm going to try and pull them apart. You're going to keep them together. Okay. And hold. I remember this with you. That <laughs> rings a bell. Can we try this hand instead? <laughs> and hold. Okay. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's not good enough. Sorry, I don't mean you're not good enough, I mean the test. I am very bad at it. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, but not everyone is, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll find another one. So, nice straight arm like we did in core therapy. So I'm going to try and push. Can you just take that hand off your body? And you're going to hold up, resist me, and hold. Much better, okay? Yeah. So I put a certain amount of pressure on. I mean, I could have got you to the couch, but it would have been a fight. So I just wanted to see how much resistance, and there was a, a good amount. And okay. now we're going to compare that resistance to when you've each one of these essential oils is on you. So I'm not going to tell you what they are, because you'll be influenced. Yeah? It's all right, the label isn't showing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And hold. That's a pass. Mm -hmm. And hold. That's a pass. It'd be funny if I like them more. <laughs> and hold. A little bit juddery. Mm. It hurt me. <laughs> and hold. Pass. And hold. Judgery. And hold. Yeah. My lovely cedarwood. And hold. Beautiful. I think you're going to have a choice here. You've got five so far. And hold. Lovely. Yeah. How much stronger you are with this than, than that test. I know. Last one. And hold. No, that was weaker. I wonder which ones they didn't like. You didn't like, but this is only today, remember. Another day, your body might say, yay. Yeah. So, frankincense, lemon, and Roman chamomile. Ooh. Do you want to know the yeses? Yeah. We've got lots, and you can choose, because I won't be using this many. So, we've got clove, clove bud, tea tree, rosemary, organic, Eucalyptus stegariana, which is a lemon eucalyptus, it's beautiful. Cedarwood atlas and thyme, sweet thyme. Oh, gosh, there's so many. Do I just use one? No, let's do three. Okay. Um, do you remember them? I love eucalyptus. Yeah. And 
cedarwood. Yeah, lovely. But I can't decide on the third one. So that's good because cedarwood is a bass note and eucalyptus is a top note. Okay. So they would, uh, the cedarwood will hold the eucalyptus because eucalyptus is volatile. So okay. excellent choice. Wow. So we can go for another or just use those. So we've also got clove and tea tree, rosemary and thyme. My gut's saying clove. Yeah. But I don't even know what clove smells like, so I don't know why oh, my gut is really saying clove. it's really strong. But do you know what? I told this to someone the other day. I have tested hundreds of people with kinesiology for essential oils and clove hardly ever fails for mm. anyone in any circumstance and any illness, any issue, because it just is uh, like a top buster. Clove, Eucalyptus stegoriana, and cedarwood. Putting the cedarwood in first. A thick oil. Ah, oh, it smells divine. Wow. Do love cedarwood. Okay, putting the eucalyptus stag in next. One, two, three. So we've got two of cedarwood, three of eucalyptus stegoriana. And then we're going to use... I'm just going to try one of clove to start off with. Just going to have a little mix. Oh, it's nice and warm. It's been on the aroma stone. No, I think I'm going to put another one of clove in. There we are. Another little mix. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, you'll like this. So. Oh, that's amazing. You chose them. That's so nice. Yeah. So, I don't want to give you an oily lip, but can I put it somewhere that you'll smell it? Maybe on your neck, would yeah. that be all right? And then you can smell it during the treatment. Yeah. Oh, it's like the perfect amount of eucalyptus in there. Yeah. Just a three, I think. Slight note. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. it's so nice. But remember it's a, a lemon eucalyptus, so it's it's makes you think that it's lemon. But it's a secret, it's not lemon at all. It's it's eucalyptus. Oh you're right, that feels a little bit warm, it's lovely. Yeah, it's all heated. Yeah. So first of all, I'm just going to massage, having now applied the essential oils and the carrier. I've just put the essential oils in a organic sunflower carrier oil. I just love sunflower. It behaves so beautifully. It's full of vitamins. It's like happiness and sunshine. <laughs> so at this point, I can explain what I'm doing still, but there is less explanation because that's more in the testing side than the treatment. So sometimes clients will close their eyes and relax at this point, which you can do if you want, or if you're interested and want to listen to what I have to say, then you can watch. It's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. So just a little massage. Try not to tickle. Going under the sole. Creating some softness in the muscle groups. And then circling the ankle, letting the foot go. That's it, lovely. Circling in one direction and the other. Supporting at the ankle. And round, 
nicely relaxed, lovely. And coming onto the left foot, circling at the ankle and back. Round the ankle joint. Lovely. Up and down the sole. Okay. Just having a little feel within the systems of the body. Yeah, something there. That was that lung point on the left, uh, the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to start off on the solar plexus, just like I did when I was testing. Coming round in a clockwise rotational direction, using the pad of my thumb rather than the end. Just wanting to instill some reassurance, some trust, a good pressure, just nice. Not too gentle or firm, just a nice pressure. Reassuring the solar plexus and the whole neural system. All the nerves can just relax. Nice. Coming back to that sunshine and happiness of the sunflower oil. That lovely yellow energy that the Solar plexus stimulates golden sunlight. And then I want to work on the spine next, creating some structure and some length down and up that spine. I'm actually pushing as well as clearing with a row of finger pads coming right down to the coccyx up through the lumbar thoracics there's a lovely channel here perfect for a row of fingers to clear down the side of that spine it's feeling better already I can still feel where that little peaked part of the spine is that needs a little TRC but it's, it's already getting better. So then I'm just going to concentrate with those fingers at first and then bring the thumb in and caterpillar bounce through that particular point of that lower thoracic which is about T11, 12 down to L1. Quite often when I'm doing this, I feel it myself. So I'm sort of sensing that tightness. Yes, in the foot, but more importantly, in this part of the back. Helping it clear. creating some strength. You see the spine is a really strong system of bones and holds up our whole body. And the thoracics are big vertebrae, especially these lower ones, chunky big vertebrae that help us rotate, support the lower ribs protect the organs and about this point would be kidneys and adrenals. It's also some of the digestive system. So I'm just helping to instill some strength in this part of the thoracics. Tell the thoracics everything's okay. They can breathe, they can expand the lungs and contract. They can go with the flow, let the breath come in. 
and out. That's it, that's much better. Good. Okay, so moving on to the lungs. Might as well treat both lungs at the same time. Coming up the outer part of the lungs in a, again, a caterpillar bouncing action, working upwards, almost like the breath is being pushed out and expelled. Coming out of those lungs, bouncing up. Lovely. So the point that was sore earlier was here. Uh, it feels good now already. So coming on to the shoulder points, back to the skeletal system. So just looking at the bone of the shoulder point, just under the deltoid, coming around and holding the foot so it doesn't move too much with the fingers, but then rotating with the end of the thumb pad. It's quite nice to do both feet at the same time because it gives me a little perspective on comparing one side to the other, although frequently I see one foot present completely differently to the other foot on clients. So sometimes it can be a whole host of different structure. The, fit can, the foot can look quite different to the other or it can present different congestion points within the meridians when you're looking for reflexology zones. Uh, but again, these are starting to clear already. Yeah, so Melissa talked about shoulders earlier and how they can be tense, probably work but also the amount yeah. you carry maybe yeah i think so like my bag and also my tripods yeah on the shoulders so just feeling into particularly that right shoulder point it was quite what i would call sore and i know it's not my shoulder but i feel like i can feel it mm -hmm. um it was clicking quite a lot earlier but that feels so much better now I think you're going to feel greatly relieved. Um, what else are we going to look at? We're going to look at the hips, both sides. Now these di didn't present an issue earlier, but I just felt that they were protruding and that can lead them for, to feeling vulnerable, like they're sticking out a bit. Um, they can get caught in life um, hips are so important, just like the neck, the whole pelvic girdle. And we need to be flexible with our hips. We need to be able to turn and support and carry, bend. Yeah, so again, just like it was with the right shoulder, the left, uh, the right hip is clicking a bit now as well. So I can feel, um, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes I can hear a sound with mm. a feeling and this sound is that feeling right. that, it, that it's going over uneven ground like um, crystals. Okay. Mm, it's already going though. So I'm just using two finger pads on both sides both hips. Yeah, wonderful, brilliant. Um, the ovary came up on this foot as well. There's a lot on the right side. 
So I'm just going to support the foot up a little and then work into the outer side. Yeah, that does feel a bit sore. This is the one you grimaced at earlier, I think. Yeah. So this is the right ovary. I'm just going to take it a little bit more gently because it does feel a bit sore. So just like with tween R, we tend to bounce, bend and rock the spine when we're working on the back with core therapy. And with reflexology, it's a sort of similar push. I'm bending this part at, at the structure of the foot that marks the ovary in order to create some softness there, some some bounce so that it stretches back once I once I push it, once I bend it. It's not quite doing that yet. I need to spend a little bit longer here. Yeah, I can feel it. Can you? Yeah. So it's not as bad as it was earlier then? It's not as tender, but it, it's kind of like what you said. It feels like gritty sand or something that's being moved about. Mm. It's really it's a weird sensation. Mm. That's better. Other ovary didn't come up, so I'm now looking at... Oh, uh, there was just one place on the left that didn't come up on the right, so this is down the descending colon. Yeah, it is quite tight there. There. Oh, can you feel that? That's quite tight. So I'm just, again, caterpillar tracks from where the colon bends round from the transcending, which goes across the abdomen. Yeah, again, I think I need to be treating quite gently here. Okay, so coming down, that's it, just relax the foot. I'm going a little bit more gently, just encouraging that downward movement. And I know with the abdomen itself, when I'm working there, I tend to work up. It's almost like you have to sh shift some grit out of a tube. And sometimes if it's stuck in a particular place, you have to agitate it in the wrong direction first before it'll start giving and breaking up and then you can push it in the right direction. Okay. I don't know if we know that we do that, but we do do it quite a lot with things. We push it in the wrong direction first. Oh. So that works with the abdomen or with feet as well. When we're shifting something, we just do it a little and then it'll give, it'll soften, and then you can go in the correct direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then out, might as well, seeing as I'm down that way, might as well bring it all the way down and out to the end of the colon. So I've worked on the hip, shoulder, and descending colon on the left side of the foot, and I've worked on the ear, shoulder, lung, hip, ovary, and back on the right side of the body, of the foot. I still need to look at the right cervical lymph and then finish off with the urinary detox, the clear out by working on the kidneys.
Lovely. Okay. So let's look at this. Cervical lymph here. So this is the lymph factory that's in the chest. Um, it feels fine now. Quite often other systems of the body will be cleared when you're working on original oh. systems. So that feels good. I'm glad I checked it. Uh, so looking at the urinary system, uh, sorry, the yeah, urinary or excretory system. So we're coming down through the adrenal, kidney, not as bad as it was. That's one that you grimaced at earlier. Yeah, it's fine now. Quite so bad. And then down the ureter to the bladder, fine. Just checking the other one. Adrenal, which helps calm our stress response. Kidney, that all right? Yeah. yeah ureter to the bladder. I'm going to cross my hands over so I can work on both at the same time. There we are. They feel so much better. <laughs> so earlier, I can't remember what we were doing at the time, but I talked about kidneys and the fact that the kidney relates to a sensation of fear in the body if the kidney is compromised in some way, if it's not having enough fluids being flushed out, if it's not being warmed, if it's left to be cold, or if the back is tight at the kidney area just above the waist. Um, so it's really nice to repeat this movement, which helps reassure, warm and flush out the kidneys all in one go. Obviously, we need to marry this up with drinking water at the same time in order to help that detox process. Oh, so much better, lovely, really nice. Okay, just a little massage to finish. Actually, what I'm going to introduce is a little Brazilian toe technique where I start off on the middle toe and it's just a sense of warming and clearing any residual waste energy that needs to be recycled. Come back round and receive as a renewed vigour, renewed energy. But for now, we're just channeling out any energies we no longer require. Coming on to the fourth toe. It's just a really nice sensation of letting go. Second and the top toe.
Brazilian toe technique is one of those therapies that you could just carry on doing for hours. It's so relaxing. And I know through having it done myself that it just feels like it's something that you never want to end. Even though you're getting rid of adverse energies, it still feels like the body is growing in energy and feeling supported and nurtured. using this, this sheet to pad off any excess oil. Then I'm going to put on these new, fresh, warmed socks from the radiator. Nice and fluffy socks, perfect for after reflexology to warm the feet and ankles. So nice. It's like walking on a cloud. It is. <laughs> And they look pretty too. They do, they're really cute. <laughs> okay, so that's the reflexology. Thank you so much, that felt amazing. Yeah. You look quite dreamy. I, di I didn't know feet could feel so amazing, it was so relaxing. Oh. I wasn't ticklish at all in the end, it was great. Good. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure, lovely oh. lady. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So leave these on for a little while because your feet will need the warmth before you put your own socks on, which are also on the radiator. Okay. So when you get up, get up really carefully because I think you probably entered quite a comatose state <laughs> in your own lovely little world when you were having the Swiss Reflex treatment. Mm. Um, do drink lots of water after the therapy to help flush out the kidneys and I just want to say thank you so much for visiting mm -hmm. and I have loved treating you Melissa. Well, thank you so much, thank you for having me, I've, I've loved receiving it too. Oh bless thank you. Thank you. Hi Melissa, Hello. I feel like giving you a hug, <laughs> why, why not? Oh. <laughs> Gorgeous lady. So you're back for another collab and we are enjoying these, aren't we? Lots of therapy and you've had a reflexology with me before. Yes, I have. I loved it so much. Yeah, I really like aromatherapy oils as well. So having oh, that mixed in there, I loved it. It's quite unusual, I think. Um, so that's why we call it Swiss Reflex because it's a different take on standard reflexology. So... I've got lots of friends here. These are all my friends, my essential oils. And they've all got different qualities. And I wish I knew every quality of every friend. Oh. You would want to know all your qualities of all your friends. But uh, from the ones I know, I'm going to put some together in a while, once I've done the assessment for your reflexology that will help your overall body health. It's not just for your feet, it's for your whole body and mind. And each essential oil has a different natural chemical components which will help you in lots of different ways. So they might help digestively, respiratory, or they might help with muscular skeletal issues and structure. They might help mentally and emotionally. And many also help spiritually. Okay. Mm, which is fascinating. 
Um, now that doesn't mean to say that one oil is only good for one thing, mm -hmm. because one oil will have many different ways it can help you. And what, as an aromatherapist, in fact I'm a clinical aromatherapist, I've done more advanced training, as a clinical aromatherapist it's our job to work out which oils which have a whole range like um what do you call them those maps those little it's like a spider map but i didn't want to say the word spider <laughs> um when you've got a word in the middle and lots of reasons around oh, it yes spider diagram it is it's a spider diagram you see okay right so Imagine an essential oil in the middle and it'll have lots of different reasons why it can help you okay. to a lesser or further extent. And they will cross over, like a Venn diagram, to many other essential oils. And it's our job to find that centre of the Venn diagram, okay. to find that mix of oils that will give you today, in this moment, because you'll be different tomorrow, you'll be different next year, mm. the best treatment possible. Okay, so it's like detective work almost. It is, you yeah. have to put your Inspector Clouseau hat on. <sighs> so, so for instance, if you were to come to me, glasses on, if you were to come to me and say you needed help with your respiratory system, mm -hmm. so maybe um, a touch of asthma or sinus issues, headaches caused by blocked sinuses, ear infections. I'd be looking to oils like myrrh and nayuli and oh, a big hitter, red thyme, definitely sweet thyme. I'd be looking at Eucalyptus stegariana, one of my favourites, cedarwood as well, uh, myrtle, mm, even hoe leaf, which is a bit like rosewood. And then some of my larger oils, just because I use so much of them that I need them in bigger bottles. Definitely sweet basil. And we also have peppermint, wonderful for breathing, respiratory. We have lemon, very cleansing. Tea tree, big hitter, so antifungal. And he antiseptic. In fact, every essential oil is antiseptic. Uh, eucalyptus. So there's lots of different forms of eucalyptus. This one is called Eucalyptus stegar. Uh, no, it's Eucalyptus stegariana. I've got there. That's my friend there. Eucalyptus smithii is um, an amazing essential oil. It's one of the very first ones I learnt because it's has very small molecules and therefore is fine to use with babies and children and the elderly and the frail and, uh, and, and with ailments. So eucalyptus smithii you can diffuse in a room even with youngsters in and it, it won't be harmful because the molecules are small. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Definitely rosemary. So you know, just for the respiratory system, we have a lot of oils here. So let's switch across to the digestive system. And I would be looking at some of the same ones, maybe thyme, definitely peppermint. Peppermint's very cooling and calming. I would go for coriander. So these are all the digestive ones here. I'd go for black pepper. Black pepper, I know it's a strong spice, a big, big hitter, but actually fantastic for muscle ache and pain and digestive system, very calming. I would also go for cinnamon, mandarin, marjoram sweet, 
Ah, ginger. Obviously, everyone knows that ginger is very calming. And the way I think about it is if you were to grate a root ginger and then you wash the grater, it, the, the, the old remnants of, of the ginger left on the grater just fall away. They wash away and leave nothing left like no like cheese does or, or a potato would. It just is a clean root. And it's the same with, uh, it's the same with ginger and the root. It leaves it very cleanly within you. So you have this gorgeous cleansing effect of ginger. And the same with lemon, you know, L lemon and ginger, as we tend to put them together, just really cleansing and purifying. So digestive system, respiratory system, uh, and one of my other favorite conversations, the hormonal system. So, you know, let's think about menopause, let's think about PMT, let's think about infertility, let's think about amenorrhea, which is absence of periods. Um, let's think about starting periods right early in life. So we're looking at ones definitely like rose geranium, German chamomile. Look, I love it so much. I've got two rose geraniums. We'd be looking at geranium itself and a lovely, lovely one, clary sage. Now, clary sage reminds me of birth because I used clary sage with my first or second, my second birth because it helps retract the uterus and dilate the uterus. Um, the only thing is it worked so quickly that it happened very quickly with me, uh, which is fine, you'd say, oh, excellent, yeah. but there's a certain amount of pain that happens if, uh, it, if, it happens quickly. if it happens really quickly. So that's happened with me and I dealt with it. I didn't need any drugs or anything else. Um, and I was in a water birth uh, unit at the time. So, you know, you've got the support of the warm water. And yeah. But yeah, so whenever I smell clary sage, it takes me straight back to wonderful, wonderful moment of giving birth to my beautiful baby. Yeah, so it works really. So in the end, it was just on a tissue. We had to put the tissue out of the room. It, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that uh, powerful? Jez put it the other side of the room. I could still smell it. And so I said, no, it, it needs to go out of the room. Mm. It needs to go in the bin, really, yeah. because it was work, working, working too much too with well. me. <laughs> because the other thing is, Clary Sage, fantastic for pain relief. Mm. Um, so even though it was happening quickly, there was a certain amount of pain with it, but it was reducing that pain for me. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. So a lovely friend to yeah. have. Yeah, memories with her. Oh, and of course I haven't talked about lavender. You know, lavender hormonally. Um, in fact, lavender I call it an umbrella oil because it's good for practically everything. It covers all of these issues: digestive, respiratory, hormonal, just to name a few of the systems of the body. Mm. So let's see what comes up with you today. Yeah. I'm just really curious. Yeah. What are the differences in colours on the ah. labels? Is that the base note thing? I thought it might be. So, we, what's blue, do you think? Oh, I think I remember earlier that frankincense, which was, was a base note, was That's blue, right. potentially. That's right. But what are the other two? That's what I don't know. Is middle there... and top notes. Right. So my yellows are middle notes. Okay. And my reds are top notes. So you can see I've got a, well, I've got a good spread, but yeah. a lot of top and base, I think. Do you think? Wait, which, sorry, which one was top again? Yellow? Red. Red. But I suppose yeah, a good spread. Like a yellow. Yeah. yeah. So what you really want in the perfect, perfect mix of mm. essential oils is a top, middle and base note. Right. Because the base will fix the other two because the base is not as much volatile. The top note is very volatile, so that means it will absorb into the air and diffuse into the air really easily. That's mm. why you smell them first, because it's in the air. Mm. Yeah. 
So a little part of that oil has gone up your nose. It's literally sitting in your nose. That's why you can smell, smell it. Smell it. Yeah. And mm. then the middle note is just nice. It's that, it's that steady influence that you've got of the middle of the oil. Yeah. And of course, that's absorbing into your skin, your scalp. Mm. Um, infusing and you're breathing it in. There's um, an olfactory bulb, O-L-F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, olfactory bulb, as in um, like a gland, let's call it, yeah. just behind here. Yeah. Um, so when you breathe in and you breathe an essential oil, you're breathing it in and there are different components of that oil, different um, chemical elements, will go up and hit the olfactory bulb. And the olfactory bulb will decipher whether those elements need to go to various different parts of your head. So it could be helping with memory, it could be mm. helping hormonally, digestively, yeah. respiratory. And they will send messages and that message might be euphoric. It might be for upliftedness mm. and happiness or it might be sedatory so it might be sedating your and calming you and just saying everything's okay you know um, so lots of different messages can happen at that point and it is really interesting when I have people that have uh, an essence of depression or anxiety or f just feeling low or down or not being able to put their finger on what it is mm. um, and you know when you meet people in life some people are quite depressed but actually quite manic with it mm. and you think oh you need to calm down a bit some people are depressed and can't get off the sofa you know and different essential oils will have the up or or calming, upping or calming effect, depending on which essential oil you use. And when I have people as clients in the Bothy, I use that sense of knowing the oils, knowing my friends, to work out which type of upping or downing we need to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a fine balance, because you can't just say, that's good for de depression, use that, because yeah, yeah. it might be it might be sedating, and therefore they, they might not need to keep mm. keep down, they might need it's some upliftment. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's really like a case-by-case -case basis. Absolutely. It's that, wow. back to that Venn diagram. Yeah. I think I can see some of the ones I used last time, so I'm curious to see whether my subconscious will want the same or not. There is another way of finding out which oil would be right for you today. Mm. And that is dowsing. Have you ever done dowsing? I don't think so, no. Shall we do that? Yeah, that sounds... I love trying new things. Okay, yeah. so we'll do it after the assessment, okay. shall we? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's all right. Looking forward to it. Mm. So, I've got some lovely chamomile hydrolat here. A hydrolat is the water that they used to throw away when making essential oils from the distillation process. Mm -hmm. And now they realise that hydrolats have their own qualities which are often, or sometimes, quite different from the qualities of essential oils of the, of the same plant. Oh, isn't that amazing? Um, they're safer to use, they have fewer uh, contraindications. So I'm just giving your feet a nice little smooth off with the cotton infused Roman chamomile pads. That smells lovely. Mm. It smells almost like licorice. <sighs> oh, last time I did Melissa, didn't I? I did, yes. <laughs> Melissa for Melissa. Well, we've got Roman chamomile today, and Roman chamomile is anti-inflammatory, it's very calming, it's good for sleep, good for skin, like eczema, beautiful oil, or hydrolat. Hello, feet. So, do you want me to explain reflexology? Yes, please. Or not? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think you did briefly last time, but I would love to know. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I love learning. <laughs> You'll be able to know it all. I mean, well, you... I think 
last time when you mentioned top notes and bottom notes, I kind of from context have worked out what it is, but it's so fascinating hearing you give the explanation in depth as to what exactly the oils are doing. Mm. I, I really love the whole all of reflexology. I, I just find, I've always been fascinated by it. Mm. So. Maybe you should do something. Maybe you I should. Did. My mum used to do it as well. So as a kid, oh. I was always kind of interested. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now look at you. Yeah. Lovely. I bet she's so proud of you. I think she's jealous. <laughs> oh, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so beautiful map of the body on the feet here. So we've got the left side of the body the right side of the body. This is the spine going down the center. So we've got the beautiful shape of your spine running from the neck down all the vertebra, right down to the sacrum. Then all the organs contained in the upper body are contained in the upper part of the foot down to the narrowing, the waist here, and likewise for below. So the head is actually cut into two. We've got the big toe here, left and right sides. The sinuses are in the other toes. Uh, the lungs are in the foot upper pads here. And I will explain what part of the body I'm doing as I go forward. Uh, how it might feel for you when I'm testing the feet. And bearing in mind, I have extremely short nails. Okay. So it won't be a nail or a nail edge that you'll feel. But if I was to press in a certain place and it feels sharp to you, that's a sign that there is some congestion there in the meridian, the energy line that works its way through the body. Now those meridians aren't to do with the nerve system, the circulation, the white blood cells. It's its own system okay. of, of meridians that has been worked out over hundreds, if not thousands of years by the ancients that this works, where the meridians end up at the extremities and gives you a map of the body. The same for the hands, the same for the face, and the same for the ears. So the ear is an upside down fetus. So this is the head here, and this is the spine going around the back oh, there. Okay. Um, Okay, so looking at the body, I'm going to have a little feel one point at a time and one system at a time. See, that feels a bit clicky to I me. I feel that, yeah. It did to you? Yeah, it did. Something was jiggling along with your finger. Yeah, you see, the more you have of treatment, the more you're becoming body aware. It's really good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, less so on this side. Yeah, can't feel it on that side. Just That's a little bit on your solar plexus, you see? You're doing so my weird. job. I, I couldn't feel it as much last time I was oh, here. So. Okay. That's amazing. Um, so now going on to the sciatic nerve. So starting at the very base, or, ne or near the base of the spine, so right at the bottom of the foot and coming round and down the leg, which works its way down here. Same for this side. I'm just going to pick the foot up and feel it around there and down. Okay, that feels good, sciatic nerve. Now looking at, let's have a look at the neck and the spine. So feeling this side of your neck, your right side back and just feeling down there's a lovely channel here a natural channel which is the side of the erector spinae the, the the muscles of the spine let's just have a feel of that neck first oh it feels oh yeah on your left can you feel that that is painful it's not nice no it's not nice <laughs> <laughs> and then the back of the neck on the left hand side and now coming round down the spine to the base 
And bearing in mind you have a lot of treatment, so yeah. I'm hoping not to find much. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Um, okay, now shoulder blades. So coming up behind here. These are your angel wings. The only thing I can feel with those is that they're slightly dehydrated, which I know sounds really odd. How can shoulders be hydrated? Yeah. But I mean, everything needs hydration. And the uh -huh. reason I can feel that is because when I'm pushing, it's not inflating very quickly. It leaves a dent for, for too long. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what I, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So just, is that just a lack of drinking water then? And yes. Has it gone there? Yes, but I know with my core therapy that sometimes clients come in saying, I have drunk buckets of water, there's no way I'm dehydrated. Yeah. You know, when they get on the couch and I do the hair pull thing. Mm. And I say, well, you are still dehydrated, you need to drink water. Mm. And I say, there is probably a reason your body isn't holding on to the water. Maybe you are drinking plenty of water, but mm. you're just getting rid of it rather than holding on to that moisture. And there are certain foods, apparently, maybe viewers can do some research on this, mm. that help retain and absorb that moisture so you hold on for longer. If you're one of those mm. people that seems to always be drinking water but not feel uh, or show hydration, like, yeah. like showing hydration here. Um, I believe, but people can look into this, yeah. that electrolytes, are you okay. familiar with that? So like yeah. sports, sports drinks. drinks and stuff. Um, so my, Jez and I cycle and we have these little tablets that we put into our drinks when mm. we're cycling to help uh, rehydrate the mm. body when cycling and they are for instance electrolytes but you can get them in lots of different mm. types of uh, medium. Um, I've also been told that drinking lemon water helps right. whether this these yeah. are accurate people can look into this but what I'm just suggesting here mm. is that just because you drink lots of water might not mean that you are hydrated yeah. the body might show dehydration in different ways and look into ways of holding on to your moisture mm. yeah yeah no, that's really good advice thank mm. you I've never I've never thought about that before mm. Mm. okay joints so we're looking at elbows I noticed with your massage earlier that your elbows are quite dry. Oh, okay. Have you noticed? Is that this, this bit of it? Just the, the back yeah, elbow. I, I don't really moisturise my elbows. No. Or, or body in general, so. Do you not? Yeah. I, I moisturise every morning and I have done since, I think, since I started doing aromatherapy when I was 28. Oh, wow. So I'm more shocked because I make Do you my own. Feel sticky and... No, my oh. my skin just feels beautifully hydrated and soft, oh. and I put different essential oils in every time. I just right. think, oh, what do I feel like today? And I'll put Ooh. different ones in. That makes it quite fun, I guess. So I do a big pot, and yeah. it lasts me like three months, and then I get through it, and then I make a whole new mix. Oh. So yeah, so maybe put something on your elbows. They're a little bit dry. They're, they're okay today because I've just treated them. Mm. Um, and then hips on the bone. This one's clicking. Ooh. And then knees. I'm just wondering if your thigh is going to come up. That's a good point. That came up in core therapy, didn't it? So let's have a look at respiratory system. So we're looking at the lungs. Oh, a bit crunchy. You might be trying to fight something off at the moment because I can't, you don't suffer with asthma, sinusitis, any respiratory issue? Um, I sometimes can get a bit breathless, but it's not asthma or anything. What occasion, like walking up a steep hill or something? Uh, there's not always a reason there, just... Maybe, yeah, sometimes even like a tiny bit of exercise. It comes in waves. I okay. think it's like some form of long COVID, but oh. yeah. So I haven't had it much recently though. So yeah. as long as I'm not ex like overdoing too much physical activity, I can breathe fine. But 
I think the doctor said I breathe from too high up sometimes instead of... Too shallowly. Too shallow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So practice some yogic breathing mm. where you inflate the abdomen when you're breathing in. Yeah. And you pull the abdomen in in order to chuck the air out. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing because on days like this or when I've been doing lots of filming, I can feel that my breathing issues are a lot better because I think with treatments you're often told to breathe deeply and oh. kind of forced to breathe properly like yeah. to help yourself so I've been really good today I haven't had any breathing issues so yeah that's nice self-care is good oh it really <laughs> is yeah and surely you're the queen of self-care yeah it might be <laughs> especially at the moment <laughs> okay so we've looked at respiratory I've looked at sinuses just now now we're going to look at the eyes. Not really, not really. I, I, I was going to say something, but it would be really picky. So that feels quite solid and that feels tiny bit clicky, but not enough to do something about. And then the ears. Can you feel the bone there? Yeah. Mm. I can really feel it. No, they feel okay. They feel okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've done skeletal, respiratory. Let's go on to digestive. So I'm going to come across the small intestine, working from the right hand side. Going to feel into the liver, a large organ, a little bit higher up than the small intestine. I'm working quite firmly in a caterpillar movement with my thumb. And then to the pancreas and stomach. I thought something was clicking, but I think it was just the movement of my thumb on you. Friction on your foot and then coming across again more small intestines and now want to come down that iliosacral valve up the ascending colon across transcending down the descending and out feels fine good despite just having had lunch yeah it's good. All right, um, let's look at the lymph system. So I'm going to come to the front of the foot, just down between the first and second toes, just an inch down here. That one's feeling a little bit blocked, so that's lymph in the chest area. And then coming around the inguinal lymph. Feels okay. The reproductive system, so coming the outside of the ankle, caterpillar movement with a soft finger pad, being very sensitive to any feelings here, and then in the centre just relax your feet. Feels okay? Feels good. So that's ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus. Um, now I want to look at the excretory system. So we're looking from the adrenal gland to the kidney, down the ureter to the bladder. Yeah, the kidney's tight. And, and it is on that side. I always treat the kidneys anyway, but I will definitely treat them here. Right, so pituitary is in the big toes because it's in the head. It just sits just right in the middle there. And 
tiny click on your left side. Right side's fine. Fascinating. And then up the thyroid to the parathyroid. Feels good? Mm. Lovely. Oh, wonderful. Lovely. So, glandular system, not bad. All sorted. So, let's have a look at putting together some essential oils using dowsing. Okay, so I'm just going to do some dowsing with my trusty little dowser here. And I think you're supposed to give them a name. I don't know if I've given her a name before. Let's just ask. Actually, I know this is going to sound really strange to you guys. It probably does to me as well. But, um, so my little dowser here, can you show me a yes? I'm not doing anything. I can remember watching this years ago in person and on TV and thinking that hand is moving. My hand is not moving at all and it's going around in a clockwise, yeah, a clockwise manner. Okay, and stop. Okay, little dowser, can you show me a no? Okay, it's a bit more reticent, but it is starting to move. Oh, when I'm talking, it stops. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's making very small anti-clockwise movement. Wow, that's so fascinating. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Oh, it's getting a bit bigger now. You. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's going anti-clockwise. Okay. Okay, little dowser. Would you like the name Amber? No. That's a really strong no. I thought you liked Amber. That's no. stronger than the example for no. <laughs> yes. yes. It really doesn't like yeah. Amber. Melissa, give me a name. Um, oh gosh, it's kind of stripey though. Stripey. <laughs> okay. My little dowser, would you like to be called stripey? Oh my goodness. Is that a yes or a no? Is that a yes? Really likes stripey. <laughs> I yes. would never have thought of that. Honestly, I'm not moving my hand <laughs> at all. Much. Look how strong that is. <laughs> I think it's got a sense of humour. Uh, I like it. Okay. We can be good friends. Okay. <laughs> and you'll notice when I stop it, I just put my hand under. I'm not actually in contact with it. Right. So, uh, Stripey, I would like you to choose some essential oils for Melissa, my friend here. Is that okay? That's a really strong yes. I'm glad. Imagine if it said no. Yeah, well, then we'd be doing kinesiology instead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank Stripey. you very much. Thank you, Stripe. <laughs> I can't believe this. It's hysterical. Okay. So I have a whole range of essential oils here. I'm just about to put a mix together for Melissa's Swiss reflexology treatment. So I'm going to move the dowser over the, or, or towards the essential oils, and it may well point at a, an essential oil that it wants me to use. I am not doing that at all. And instead of going in a circle, a clockwise or anti-clockwise circle, it's starting to swing. As soon as I mentioned essential oils. Now it's pointing to one, but there are a number in that line. So I'm going to Bring one over and see if it's this one. Not moving at all. Okay, we're quite strong for Ylang Ylang. 
Now Ylang Ylang is really good for the skin. It really helps with blemishes and balancing skin tone. It's really good for sleep. It's very commonly used for insomnia and for calming and sedating. Okay, so we're using Ylang Ylang. So we've got our first essential oil. Okay. So let's just put that to the side. Now, as well as Ylang Ylang, what other essential oil would you like me to use, Stripey? So, I'm guessing that you mean rose geranium. Do you mean rose geranium? This is going to be a beautiful mix. So far, you've got two gorgeous flowers. Mm -hmm. Rose geranium and ylang ylang. Look, a base note and a middle note. Oh yeah, so that's the blue and the yellow. Um, so stripey, give me a third essential oil to use for Melissa's reflexology. I'm wondering if you mean myrrh. So in my eye line, that was the, the one that, yeah. Oh, that's a very strong, yeah. It's a very strong, and um, it's another bass note. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I wondered about that. Like, does, does Stripey know which ones can go together? Yeah, you, you just have to trust the universe. So we've got three gorgeous essential oils here. Myrrh. Ylang Ylang and Rose Geranium. I'm going to add it to my pre-prepared little pot here of organic sunflower oil. So let's put a couple of drops of each one ready to apply to the feet. Oh, I can smell that one already. It hasn't even come out yet. There you go. So that was Rose Geranium. Can you smell that? Lovely, and a couple of ylang ylang. And now myrrh. This might be a bit slower. In biblical myrrh, beautiful. So I'm going to let you smell this beautiful concoction and see what you think. Oh wow! Ooh. Do you want a little on your inside? Yes, it please. And I can smell it all day. It's so nice. I've never smelled anything like that mix before. I can't compare it to anything, so I'm struggling to know how to explain it, but... I can smell rose geranium the most, I think. It's like a deeper version of the flowery smell. Um, and ylang ylang is quite distinctive. I'm quite that's familiar. That's what that is. Yeah. 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 It is. That's what yeah. I'm smelling. And yeah. That's lovely because I don't think I've ever u used that much in treatments. Okay. So it's very new to me. Mm. It's lovely. Mm. It's very refreshing. Almost yeah. like uplifting. Are you familiar with myrrh? Do you want to smell it on its own? I'd love to. Just smell the top. Oh. Oh, that's really interesting. That might be the depth. I was trying to put into words. Yeah. Oh, I would never knew what mess smelled like until now. Mm. Really if you nice. take a really deep breath, can you feel how that would be good for the respiratory system? Yeah, it's a similar, similar feeling to eucalyptus, like that, mm. going right in. And very spiritual. Not just the mm. connotation to the Bible, but it, it's, it really uh, looks after your spirituality. It really brings you home. It's very good for meditating with. 
Oh. Mm. I mean, I'm trying to do more meditation, so maybe that would be a way of helping the practice. Oh, so, of course. Yeah. Well, this is your mix. It's got stripey written all over it. I love stripey. I think stripey is <laughs> Stri my new best friend. Stripey. I like that stripey likes me. <laughs> is he, she, that you are stripey? Yeah, not right? Amber at all. No. <laughs> Amber's also a cute name, though. Well. A bit more. Girly. Yeah, not like so kiddy. <laughs> oh. Stripey. Stripey. Right. It. So, should we give you a nice Swiss reflex treatment? Yeah, thank you so much. Do you like a hot towel over you? Oh, yes, please. That would be lovely. Thank you. Well, let me put that in. And under. Nice. Thank you. Warm enough. Nice and Your steady. feet will warm up now. They're yeah. a little bit chilly, aren't they? Yeah, my feet and hands often are. sunflower with, do you remember the mix? Ma um, ylang ylang and then it, was it rose ger geranium? Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's the first time I've ever smelt what the was like. It's not what I expected. No. No. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've had, um, I've smelt frankincense before, and I love frankincense, but yeah, I'd never smelt myrrh, so. All you need now is gold. Gold? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> lots to smell though. <laughs> I think actually when I was quite young, there was a nativity play at church, and I was the king that carried my. Oh. Yeah, but I'd never smelt it. <laughs> it I just had like a fake thing a that box. was a box given to carry. I think sometimes in nativities, they're not just shown as a sparkly box, but they're shown as like a, um, a beautiful receptacle jug or oh. um, like a, a decorated bottle with a lovely stopper on it or like with a lovely point for pouring mm. you know because yeah. it, it obviously myrrh is a, a liquid so I'm going to start the treatment now I'm going to overlap my hands and clear down the spine Please feel free at any time just to relax your head or close your eyes if you feel comfortable to, or you may want to watch whatever you want to do. It's completely fine. So clearing down the spine. It's interesting, when I close my eyes it's almost easier to focus on the, the sensations. Ah. I find that with meditating. Mm. Mm. So I'm just looking at the map of your body on my drawing here, and I'm going to be working on the sinuses, the solar plexus, the lungs, the shoulder points, the hips, the kidneys, and the cervical lymph. Yeah, so now I'm here a little bit longer, I can feel a little bit of congestion halfway down the spine on the left-hand side. It's just about kidney level, but of course it's on the spine itself. Yeah, I don't know if you can feel that, Melissa, but there's a little bit of tightness right there. Yeah, I can feel that. Mm. So I'm just going to give that an extra 
TLC. In there. We'll revisit that, I think. Now coming up to the solar plexus, working on the feet symmetrically and in a clockwise manner, because of course the solar plexus is also a chakra, as well as a very physical part of us. It's a network of nerves that sits in the abdomen just just lower than the, the rib cage, just above the umbilical. And just feeling into that area here, instilling some calm because the solar plexus is all to do with our contentment, our feeling of coming home, restedness and self-esteem. It's a beautiful, large and bright yellow sunshine chakra. Lovely, that feels better. Really good. Uh, now coming on to shoulder points while I'm here in this area. And those essential oils will also have a hydrating effect, not just the carrier sunflower. So I'm just supporting with my thumbs, but then circling around the shoulder points. And sometimes shoulders have the added connotation of supporting us because they they carry our load they help us carry our responsibilities in life and so by massaging into the reflex point of the shoulders it helps to lighten our load it helps us to feel capable and in control of our responsibilities and burdens hmm much better now up to the sinuses. When we were talking earlier, I was just testing the sinuses, which are the toe pads. And it's, it's already gone actually just by testing and minimally treating. So on the right foot, fourth toe, I just found a little glitch there that needed healing, already feels better. But strangely, the left one is now clicking. So I'm going to give that a little extra attention. Yeah, there we are. Lovely. And then coming round to the neck. The neck was really tight earlier. So using the pad of my thumb round the left side of the neck and mobilising the toe at the same time to help mobilise the neck. Mm. I'd call it sore, but I know that I'm not experiencing the sensations, but to me feels like I'm having it done so that feels sore to me um, it's quite tight at the back just giving it a little extra flexibility whereas the flexibility of the toe is good it moves really well lovely okay and then into the other side yeah again some flexibility Okay.
Lovely, nice loose neck. And now working into the lungs. So I'm going to caterpillar track movement upwards symmetrically up the lung pads, these large lungs that we all have, these beautiful organs associated with the colour white. And if we wanted to clear our lungs because we feel like we're congested or we've been inhaling pollution or we're suffering with long COVID or some other anomaly, then it's really interesting to focus on the colour white while laying soft hands on your lungs, not too heavily, and then breathing out several times with an out breath and the sound and that will really help clear the lungs. It's really good for the the Chinese meridian of the lung. Oh, they're feeling much better. Good. And coming down to the hips. Just the right hip came up earlier, but I, uh, I might as well treat both at the same time. Using my middle finger in a circular action. Yeah, the right one is clicking. So that tells me that there may well be some congestion in the meridian coming down to that right hip. Oh, that's already better. Still a little click, so I'm just going to go a little bit longer on this area. Mm. Breathing in the healing. Breathing in the softness, the alignment, the health of the hips. Feeling like this, this hip needs a little bit of extra attention, so I'm just working on the foot itself to release the bone on the side of the foot which relates to the hip. 
if you like, doing a little tweeno, bending and pushing, push and pull. That's better. Okay, so now coming to, oh yes, this shoulder blade, the scapula, needed a little extra attention, so we're, I'm going to use both thumbs here. This is near the heart, just under here would be the heart, so I don't want to be putting any pressure or any beating sensation towards the heart, so I'm avoiding that area. I'm using both thumb pads to come up. Just like if I was giving a back massage, I would be pushing both hands in an effleurage movement upwards and over the shoulders to clear any congestion and waste. Moving the lymph. Yeah, so earlier I mentioned that the shoulder pad just felt dehydrated, just felt like it needed more water. Uh, I'm not sure how much water Melissa's been drinking today, but this just feels like it leaves a little bit more. Or else some way of holding on to the hydration for longer. So just coming to the kidney area. Adrenals, first of all. Yeah, I might cross my hands and just work opposite feet. Oh, that's better. I can apply more thumb pad in a firmer action. So, into the adrenals. Beautiful. Hmm. Down the kidney to the ureter and the bladder. So all the waste and the lymph that we've got moving in the feet and the body so far, we are now sealing the deal by clearing the kidneys to the bladder to enable the body to get rid of any toxins that have been scooped up. Yeah, so the kidneys definitely need a little extra attention. That might feel a little sore. I'm using my body to work the hands in a lovely rhythmical flowing action. Always reassuring, creating space and warmth.
and coming up to the Brazilian toe technique, starting on the middle toe. Instilling some warmth. Letting the energies flow. And the first toe. Holding on to the energy for as long as possible. Amazing feeling in the room. In our bodies. And in our friendship. slightly, clearing some of the oil. Smells divine. socks. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, that feels amazing. <laughs> so toasty. Oh, here we are, my love. I feel good. Yeah. Oh, I got so sleepy halfway. I think I did too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Melissa, you're an angel to treat. Thank you for Aww. coming and I, I really cherish our times together. Oh, we'll have to do it again soon. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> you're, it's always lovely coming here as well. Mm -hmm. do, you're welcome any time. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's been a really wonderful day mm. and I'll see you again next time. Yeah.